Greetings my friends. Um, it's taken a little bit of time but we're now going to do the Grima. Francisco Torrega, the uh, godfather of modern classical guitar. It's one of his most famous pieces. You can see all this guff here. I say guff, it's all a bit complicated for an old rock and roller like me and probably for people like you too. Um, but when you dig beyond all the um, of bullshit, you end up with a very simple piece of music to play if you know exactly what to do. So the reason it's taken me a little bit of time um, for you, my friends, I've actually transposed it to a language that you will all understand, and you will understand this. When you look at tab, just a little overview, tab lets you will tell you the single notes. You know, for example, for it, it, a tab, tab might say two, 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 two on the uh, second fret. So you you know, if you didn't know anything about chords, you'd go, or something like that. But really it meant that, which, you know, and it wanted that sound. Okay, so you get the idea. So a lot of the tablature that you see is built around chord shapes. Because don't forget, melodies on classical guitar are just, they have to shoot up and down the neck but they, you also have to take the inversion of a chord with it in order to keep the rhythm going. And um, that's what makes tablature with classical stuff quite tricky and not, I mean, never sounds right. But this way of doing it should solve that problem. Well, it will solve that problem, I promise you. It will solve the problem. Now, you'll find this, and just for those people that want to look at tab as well, I've actually tabbed it out as well, In a again, in a much simpler way. It, it's exactly the, it's technically bang on correct. You know, note for note perfect. It really is. Um, but it's just taking all the nonsense out of it, all right? So, but we're going to use this one because this is the one that's going to make you think, God, I can do it. And you can. It's a grade five piece. But then it goes up to grade eight and you're going to go straight in with a grade five. And if you listen to exactly what I tell you, it's going to sound absolutely wonderful. Don't, don't give up. All right. Um, the fingering is debatable. Sometimes you can use a second finger or a third finger. So you may look at other people who've played this and say, I always used a second instead of a third. Well, if you want to use your second finger or third in certain circumstances, do so. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. Then you can make your own decision. All right. Because people's hands are slightly different. Okay. So we're going to kick off straight away with this section. piece sounds like I played it earlier on in one of my earlier vids because so I do a performance of it but all the greats play this anyway you know um, and I mean the greats they all play this piece of music so you, you've got to do it uh, right so let's get straight in if you look at the first shape I've got here you'll see this is these are your 12 frets on your on your fingerboard and this is obviously where your fingers are going to go and the finger numbers that you're going to use so for example this first shape there that one there and that one there you'll already know this much okay can you see that and down the bottom though this is the unique bit the timing i've put at the bottom which we'll look at later i don't want to bog this up down too much with this right now we'll look at that in a minute the, this is the important bit what strings do i play on each of these shapes every time i move to a different shape so any that you see in a bracket string you know for example four and one you will play those two strings together and anything that's singular like like that three is that three or two? I'm going blind. Two. You play that on its own. So if it's in a bracket, you play the strings together. And if it's in a, if it's single, it's on its own. You'll play it on its own. For example, that first shape we've got finger one there, and the little finger, the fourth finger at the fourth fret. So we've got that, and this is telling me to play strings four and one because it's in a bracket together. And then I've got to play a second string. Okay, so we've played that first one and three times. One and two and three and one and two. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. We can fill in the gaps as we go along. Little rule of the fingers. Finger one will play string three always. Finger two will play string two always. Finger three will play string one always. Thumb will play string four, five and six don't be moving your fingers up here and your thumb down there. That won't work. It will not work. You'll just end up in a muddle. All right, so don't do that. Get to use the right fingers and, you'll, and just work through it slowly, methodically, and it'll sound great. All right. 
one bar at a time. So we start off. Four and one to the second. Okay, now move your first finger up two frets to the fourth and move your little finger up one to the fifth. You can use your second finger if you want. Many guitarists do. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna stick with my one and four. So I'm gonna do that, which is probably breaking the rule, but I don't care. As long as I sound good, do when I do it, that's the way it's gonna be. Um, four and one to the second. Move that same shape up two frets. So you're now at six and seven. Four and one to the second again. And because I've kept those two fingers there and not that one, I can now trundle down to the final shape here and start building my B seventh, which is gonna be the final chord shape. When I get down to there with the four and one, which is now on the first fret, with your first little finger now on the uh, first string of the second, I'm gonna add my third finger at this point to the third string. I'm not gonna bother with this one yet. I'm gonna add this to the third. I'm gonna play four and one again to the second, then three, two, and then I'm finally, I'm gonna add my second finger to the fifth string and play a five and then a two. Let me show you that last bit there. See that B7? See, whenever you see anything with, with circles around, that's telling you that something's gonna happen. It's either gonna go on or, you know, and that you'll find out what that is from me. Okay, and that's what we've just done. We went bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, 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 bong. Okay. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, 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 bong. And again, any little daft thing that you, you, you need to do with your head to get the phrasing right, then that's fine. So we've just done the first two bars. One and two and three and one and two and three and... And guess what? Bars three and four, which follow it, oh, it's exactly the same. So we've already learned how to play four bars. We're doing well. We're doing well. So I'll play what we've got. Okay, so far so good. Now, get to a slightly trickier bit. If you have a look at this one, you'll see that you've got, oh, what's this? This is like a little mini bar. Now it's not somewhere you can go and yourself a drink, even though you may need one. It means that you're gonna put a first finger across four strings. What frets it at? It tells you here, I think. Forgive me, I can't see my own writing. At the ninth, all right? So we're now going to put our finger across four strings at the ninth fret, and your little finger will now go on the first string of, of the twelfth. Presumably, you will have downloaded this. When you see this, down, if you, you know, make sure you've got it all downloaded. Um, so if you've got this far when you're just trying to follow me, stop. Download the stuff so you can be looking at it as I'm explaining. It'll make it a lot easier. All right, so we've got our first finger there. We've got our little finger at the 12th fret, all right? And we're gonna put our third finger at this point on the fourth string at the 11th fret. Now, it's very important that you get clearance running underneath this finger, so, okay? Don't let it fall flat, otherwise you'll end up with a pothole. Sometimes I'll use that finger depending on you know, what time of day it is, I'm getting old, you know. So, if my finger's a bit achy, I might use that one, but um, that's the one to use. Okay, now, what do we do? We play four and one, strings four and one, using the correct fingers, of course, to the third string. All right, then we move our little finger to the 11th fret, keep your bar on the tip, your third finger off now, it's done its job. What do we do now? The same thing, four and one to the third. Okay. Take that very same shape and move it down two frets. Play four and one, but this time to the second string. I'll play that again. All right, then we keep our bar, add our third finger again, take our little finger off, okay? Don't let it wander off because we're gonna need it for something in a second. We're gonna play four and one, and then we're gonna add our little finger to the second string at the ninth fret. Okay, let me play that for you. I'll do the count with it. One and two and three and one and, and the final bit of this bar, two and three and, I'll show you how to do now. So one more time on this bit. That's 
where we are now. This is important we get this right. This third finger is now gonna move up two frets. Take the other fingers off. So you're now at the 11th fret with your third finger on the fourth string. And you're gonna build this chord. You're gonna play a four, then a one, then add your little finger to the third string at the 11th, which is right underneath your third finger. Play the third string. Then add your second finger to the second string at the 10th. And you'll notice that it's built a little A minor chord there. This is that chordy thing I was telling you about. See how beautiful it sounds when you play it all together. So let's put those bits together. I'll count it. One and two and three. take our second finger at this point and let it just slide into the ninth fret and whilst doing so swing your first finger over the top and play the fourth string at the ninth also it's not a difficult shape but it's important to use the right fingers and play four and one and this is the next bar one so you play strings four and two forgive me four and two and then you play an open first string as you're moving your hand down the neck. So I'll do that again. One and. Now on beat two, put your finger all the way across the six strings and put your second finger on the third string of the third fret. Okay? And play strings three and two. Then a one. Then a five. And then add your little finger to the second string of the fourth fret. Keep your bar firmly down and play three and two together. Okay, let's play that through from the previous bar. One and two and three and, and then finally go to an E major chord and play four, three and one together. One and two. Now, classical players wouldn't usually do that. I do an E major because there's a good chance, especially when you're learning this, that you'll hit that fifth string by mistake. So if you're covered with a note from the chord, if you if you were to play that by mistake, uh, like this, uh, doing a, um, what did I say I was? A four, three, and a one. Um, I can't even remember what it was. If you, yeah, it's supposed to be four, three, and a one. But if you accidentally hit a five, three, and a one, you didn't cover it, it would sound like this. Shit, sorry for the language there but that's what it's the only word you can use where some, something happens like that but if you're playing it like that and you, and you hit the wrong string you get away with it so keep your E major there until you you know you really know what you're doing and then you can um, you can get flash and not use fingers when you don't need to so let me play the first that's the whole section by the way done so we've done this one and two and three and one and two and three and do it all again one first string is, is playing that's open seconds playing use that as your vehicle to get moving to the next shape which is the tricky bar across the four string one and two and three and 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 now we're going to keep the rhythm regimented while we're learning this but eventually we'll sort of go So it was sort of go, one and two and three and 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 You get the idea, but we need to keep to that sort of regimented metronomic, is that a word? Clock, just while we're getting the hang of it and then we sort of put all the looseness into it later on. Uh, right, part one is complete, which is fantastic. Now, you might be happy just to sort of keep beating away at that for a while. Should we do part two while we're here? 
I always notice that when I do these things in two parts, people will, like La Gris, um, Cavatina, you get about loads of people looking at part one and then part two comes and <laughs> in numbers drop dramatically, they sod that, I'm not gonna have a go at that one. So I'm gonna get cracked straight on into part two. So, um, it, you know, it's not, diff come on. Just think of the pleasure you're gonna get out of it when you can do it, you know. Um, and, and the showing off, think of the showing off. You're gonna be able to do, can you, can you play guitar on there? Well, I can play a bit. Go on, give us a tune, give us a tune. <laughs> And always remember, when you get to a bit that you can't do, you say, oh, is that the time? I really must be off. But you'll leave him with the impression that you're such a fine player. Right, we've had a little break. Quick swig, ready for part two? I am. Okay, let's, let's go. Little heads up, though. I made a, If you look on uh, one of these shapes here, this third one along, I've said finger, finger two. I've got finger two there and finger two there. Should be finger one. Made a mistake. doesn't matter if you use finger two, it's just, it should be finger one. Okay, let's get straight in. The first thing we're gonna do is put our finger on the, our second finger on the first string at the third fret, and you're gonna play six, three, two, and one together. Then you're gonna move that finger to the eighth fret, and you're gonna play that first string on its own. Then drop your first finger to the seventh fret, play that first string on its own again, and then take it off. When you take it off, you're going to be moving your hand to the left, okay? So we've done that. Bang, 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 bang. Then, we're going to put a bar. You can put it across five strings if you like. I, I always put it across all six. I just find that that part of my finger there, I need to stick in to the you know, into the two and one. So I just find it easier to always do it like that. You'll see my bar chord lesson earlier on. So when you see me doing this, you know, you'll understand why I, I do it this way. So bar all the way across at the second fret. Put your little finger, your fourth finger on the second string at the fourth fret, okay? So that's the shape we've got. And we're gonna play five, three, two and one together. Excuse me. And then put, while that's still playing, Put your second finger onto the first string at the third fret. So you've really got to get it down there, you see, while the others are playing. So five, three, two, and one. And that's, you know, that'll take a little bit of time and then you can relax and go as you play the six and one, which is the first beat of the next bar. So we've got this. All right, now this next bit's quite straightforward. We're gonna play this. Now I've seen lots of pl people playing this in all weird ways, moving the fingers all up and down the neck. This is the easiest way to do it, okay? It's nice and easy, this part. You've just got to get the phrasing right, which we'll do later. F okay, so finger one here on the second string, first fret. Finger two there on the third string of the second fret. And think of the phrase, da, 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 da. Okay, so there's, we'll play strings three and two together. Take those off three and two together again then move to the fourth fret with your third finger and your first finger will now play the third string the second fret okay so we've got this move this third finger now down two frets to the second fret and play four and three again three is now open move it back to the fourth fret and replace your first finger again on the third string of second fret and play that again. So we've got da 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 da. Where are we? Oh, get mixed up on this bit. That's right, I can tell you what I am. Slightly lost there. And then we play six, three, two, and one, or six, three, and two together. Open. Let me do that again. done that we take our fingers off and play six three and two so let me play that section all right you'll see all this clearly on the uh, on the notes 
Okay. Da 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 da. Now, when you've played this, while that's ringing out, your little finger is going to sneak down to the twelfth fret and play that note on its own. So. going to lead into the next part so once again just for clarity okay when we've done that we're going to sort of now this is you know it's a little bit tricky this but you will get the hang of it we've just played again try and think of it as part of this there's our lead in note now move your first finger fourth string at the seventh fret second finger will come down and you can build these as you go along you don't have to add them all at the same time all right so we're going to play the fourth string at the seventh fret then we're going to play the first string at the eighth with our second finger and then we're going to bring our third finger up to the fifth string at the ninth and then we're going to play our second string with our little finger at the tenth so we've got this little phrase You see the way the notes sort of blend together? And then when we've done that, we're going to make a bar all the way across at the seventh fret, and our second finger will play the third string at the eighth, and we're going to play six, three, and two, which is a B seventh. So we've got this. Okay. Then we're going to add our third finger while this, these two have still been held down, and we're gonna play this. We're gonna play a fourth string at the, at the seventh fret. Now add your little finger at the, sorry, the, the third finger's on at the ninth fret here. Let me do that again. Add your third finger to the fourth string at the ninth fret, and play that note. Add your little finger to the same string and play that note at the 10th. And then take it off and play the fourth string of the ninth again. So from the B seventh, then an open second string as you're moving your hand down, and then with your little finger play the first string at the second fret. And it must be your little finger. Don't think of using another one. Let's play what we've got up to, shall we? Slowly. in context with see the way you can put the ebb and flow right well we're doing well here da, 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 da. on to the final leg so we're here we've just gone all right now we're going to move that little finger up one fret to the third this is for the, 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 the first beat of the next bar. So we're here, and our first finger is now going to be, uh, go on to the fourth string at the second fret. I'm going to play this wrong. I'll let you know you will. Now this is almost a mirror of what we did at the beginning. But we were in a minor, um, no, we were in a major key then. We're in a minor key now. This is, again, four and one to the second. Move that same shape up two frets and do the same thing again. All right. Move it up to the five and seven now. Okay, five and seven, play five and one to the second again. All right, so we've gone. So, I'm gonna play from the beginning of this section. Two, then 
we're going to move this finger <laughs> to the 10th fret. I'm going to play a 5 and a 1. <laughs> okay, so we've gone. And then we're going to roll off these strings. Da, 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 da. So while, this, while you're playing the 5 and 1, you're going to play single notes now. Keep that 5th string winging out. Second finger at the 8th fret on the 1st string. 1st string, 1st finger on the 1st string of the 7th. So I'll do that again. And then play 10, 8, 7 on the 2nd string with, with the same finger so you can see what I'm doing. Alright. And then bring your 2nd finger up to the bass string at the 7th fret and play 6 and 1 and then 3 and 2 and as those as that 3 and 2 are playing you can start using your moving down to the next down to the left for your next bit so where are we I'm just finding the right next part we're almost at the end now right so we've done we've played 6 and 1 two open okay now again really important that you use the right fingers for this little finger your fourth finger on the first string at the second fret now you really must concentrate on getting this bit right five and one together put finger one on the second string of the first fret and put finger three finger three on the third string of the second fret and play those two notes strings three and two so we've got five and one, then three and two. Keep these two fingers where they are, they're still ringing. Bring your first finger now up to the, uh, what are we, the, the fourth string, okay? And play five and two, making, you're gonna build your B seventh. And then four and three. So, let me play that again from the five and one. Finally, an E minor, four, three, and one. Again, I always put that finger on in case you did by mistake. And I'm gonna try and count that through. All right, so let's have a go. Let's hold of the second section. So, and again, it's gonna be regimented, so it's gonna sound a bit odd, but it'll give you a clue as to where all the bits go. So, one, and two, and three, Where you can put all the, the you know all the nice movie you know light and shade i wasn't liking it to the, the you know everything and flowing of the tide or a roll that goes like that but you know you've got to feel it you know that's the way to do it and you see some players if you when i when you watch this look at different people doing it you know and um some people play it much nicer than others some people play it with quite regimented which I don't really like and other people feel it more and you know let it speed up and slow down right well you, you've done that so you do part one twice you do part two twice and you do part one again once and that is the whole piece done La Grima it's a grade five piece by Torega um, do follow these. These are really important. You'll be under. Don't forget. Whenever you see little bits with circles around, that's where fingers are going to go on. All right. And all the information regarding the timing is here, 
where you put your fingers and stuff is, is above it. Um, I hope it was clear enough for you. When I'm doing these things, you know, obviously my bloody brain's going around because I'm trying to do it out of, you know, it's a bit, it's always alien when you're trying to slow something down that much that you, can, you know, you can't sort of work with the rhythm. But um, if you just follow that, uh, if you have any questions or, or anything, then you're more than welcome to, to contact me. Um, but persevere with it, please. Don't be put off uh, because some bits are hard. And let me give you a tip. I know that the bit you're going to struggle, struggle with is this. You know those bits. So when you're going to practice this thing, don't go to your practice session and say, oh, and do the easy bit. Get stuck into the bit that you're going to struggle with. Get that bit done. Because when you're playing, psychologically, if you know that that bit's coming up and you don't know it very well, it's going to ruin you know, you're going to be, you know, your confidence is going to be shot before you begin. But if you know that you've got those tricky bits, you know, already in the can, it's not going to be a, an issue for you. You know, you're going to walk through them. Okay. It's very important that you do that. And, when, you know, many times uh, somebody will come into my place, um, Blue Note, which is my little music school, and I'll, they'll say, right, well, I want to learn this. I'll say, okay. And I'll go, bam. And I'll hit him with the hardest part of the track. And I'll say, why are you doing that? I'll say, you'll find out why. So they'll do that bit and eventually they'll get it right. I'll say, right, now we'll do the easy bit. So all the pressure of knowing that that tricky bit's going to come along, you know, is um, has gone. I'm, I'm struggling with... Um, there's a bit in, in uh, Asterius, you know, where it goes... It's a, it's a real... Tr it's a nice little piece, that's great. Um, but when it gets to that fast bit, everyone goes, oh... Oh, I said, well, so the first thing I do is say, well, let's learn that first. But once we get that going, when we get to it, it's not going to be a big panic. You think exactly do that. It's easy. Well, it's not easy. It's bloody hard. I think it's a great eight. But um, anyway, enough of my bleating on. I'm going to go back outside now and enjoy the sun. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some something completely different because it's an entertainer. I have to entertain the public. I'm going to do the uh, intro to Johnny Be Good. You know, in B flat, which is a really weird key. Now, why is it in B flat and not A? Well, we used to use a lot of brass in the bands in those days. But the good news is, if you learn it in B flat, you can just go and move it one fret to the left if you want to do it in A, which is a nice guitar key for the, for, for us lot. But uh, we're going to do it in B flat, and I'm going to do it probably later on today. So enjoy that. Any problems? Ring, not ring me. Um, text me. Uh, please subscribe. Do that notification bell so you know when I'm putting something up. And uh, Thanks for your company. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.